It's the Board Talk Podcast presented by Frequency Canvas with your host, Kyron Montero, Season 2, Episode Number 6, The Art and Necessity of Audio Master, Part Number 2, Let Go. Feel good to be in 2024, you did. They Yeah, schools, yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, hey, let hey, go, hey. Let go. I shut it down. Hey, I shut it down. I'm levitating, so that real. means I'm off the ground. I'm feeling it, so that means I'm about to clown. Yes, sir. Please excuse the drip, cause somebody might drown. I shut it down. Shut it down. Hey. I'm levitating, so that means I'm off the ground. I'm feeling it, so that means I'm about to clown. Yeah. Please excuse the drip, cause somebody might drown. Yeah. Boy, so for the broken back at it again. What's going on, everybody? My name is Kyra Montero. I want to welcome y'all to the Board Talk Podcast, presented by Frequency Canvas, Season 2, Episode Number 6. Round of applause, man. And that round of applause is for you, the listener, man. Make sure that you check out the Board Talk Podcast on things like Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, which is going away and turning into YouTube Podcasts. So for everybody subscribed to Google Podcasts, make sure that you transition all your favorite podcasts like the Board Talk Podcast over to YouTube. Uh, this is similar to what they did to uh, Google Play Music years ago and it rolled all into YouTube Music. So uh, similar thing. But yeah, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, which is now YouTube Podcasts. Um, Anywhere that podcast is this, Amazon Music, wherever it is this, make sure that you check it out. Um, yeah, we got a lot to talk about in a short amount of time. First off, uh, this there's been a little gap uh, in, in season two of the Board Talk Podcast, so uh, it's good to be back. The Board Talk Podcast is a podcast um, that is dedicated uh to all things related to audio production. Uh, and so, you know, this is a special niche of people who are going to be listening to this. Uh, you know, different people throughout the music industry and the entertainment industry are going to be listening to this podcast. Uh, not just audio engineers, not just music producer, but also recording artists, musicians, podcasters, and fellow content creators. There's a lot of good information on here to think about. Um, so, yeah, so... One uh, thing I want to get started first is since this is 2024, this is February 1st, so I want to say uh, to those who haven't heard us say it yet, Happy New Year, man. A round of applause for that, man. It feels good to be here in the New Year, most definitely. So yeah, Happy New Year to everybody. Also, it is February 1st, and if you are in the United States of America, you know what that means. It is Black History Month, so a round of applause, man. Happy Black History Month. And, um, uh, you know, for all of the ancestors and people who have put in work for me as an African-American man to be standing here in front of you today. Well, I should say sitting here in front of you today, uh, rather it's on camera or you listening to this podcast uh, on all the platforms. I want to say uh, I'm, I'm grateful for all of the work put in uh, and all of the shoulders that we stand on today. Um, it would it, it would not be possible um without the work of people uh put in so yeah round of applause man thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you first off uh i gotta i gotta say that uh in january of 2024 i was honored by the avidity awards for the Master Engineer of the Year. Round of applause, man. That is big stuff, man. Where I'm from, that don't happen. Uh, so shout out to everybody uh, at the, the at the Avidity Awards, people like Derek Huggins, Tiffany French, and their entire team. They, they are a great organization for independent artists and for people that work within the independent uh, realm of the music industry. Um, so if you are... An independent artist, a gospel artist, Christian hip hop, inspirational artist. Um, they got a lot of great resources. So make sure that you reach out to the Avidity Awards. They got a lot of stuff going on. I don't even want to name everything that Derek Huggins and his team got going on, but make sure that you check out the Avidity Awards. Make sure that you check out 
everything attached to that organization. Round of applause for them. Thank y'all. So yeah, uh, do thank you for everybody that voted publicly and everything due to everybody's efforts put in and in, 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 uh, honoring me. I, I can now, I've been able to say I've had billboard credits, major label credits, you know, uh, major magazine coverage, blah, blah, blah. But now I can say I'm an award winner master engineer. So round of applause, man. Round of applause for that. Thank you very much. It's an honor. Thank you to everybody in my city, too, because this, this this has inspired and means a lot to, to my community here in Marion, Indiana, uh, which is only a small town of 30,000 people. So I want to dive into this episode, how fitting that the Master Engineer of the Year talks about the art and necessity of audio mastering. Because when you hear this word mastering, what does that mean, especially in the context of of uh record production of making records making music what is audio master uh and so this is the art and necessity of audio master in part two part one featured a good friend of mine a mentor and new mentor of mine uh roger willis of new beginning master round of applause for him and um I'm going to we're going to duplicate that process but I'm going to add on to it uh first off um when you look at audio mastering, the technical definition on paper is the last step in the creative process, the first step into the distribution process. Let me say that again. In terms of making music, audio mastering is the last step in the creative process, the first step in the distribution process, meaning that it is the last step in the production phase of record making. And also, you know, when you're making records, you're, you're starting at the songwriting and the production phase. Um, and then, you know, once that happens, you get the song recorded. And then once it's recorded, you take all of those final recordings and then you have what's called mixing, a mixing engineer. You get the song mix, and that's where you're taking all of those individual elements and kind of putting a piece of the puzzle together um, and presenting this stereo file uh, that can be listening and then from there that's when guys like myself Roger Willis and other master engineers come in and take our expertise and we're kind of like the Photoshop with the last step in the process where we're able to enhance it uh, do some corrective things and some creative things and also get it ready for distribution. Um, if you're on CDs, let's say we're mastering a whole out al- mastering the whole album. Um, you're dealing with things like the spacing in between songs, fade in and fade out. Um, you're making sure that one through 10 on the album flows right. Song one don't come in with a lot of bass and then song two come in with little bass or song one don't come in. Uh, this loud and then song two is like real quiet you're making so our responsibility is to make sure that that whole album one through ten can just play through and you're taking these you know kind of not random songs but songs that have been done in isolated time periods could have been done in different studios by different engineers and different pr- producers and what we're doing is we're making this cohesive body of work translate into the real world on as many systems as possible we're using things like equalizers compressors limiters uh and clippers different saturation tools sometimes reverb we're doing automation um so we're, we're doing uh you know there's some similarities of things that happen in mixing but it's completely different because in mixing you're dealing with every individual file of a song versus in mastering most of the time you're dealing with just a stereo file. Now, sometimes you can do something called stem mastering where a mix engineer may group a mix down and send it to us maybe in four to six different WAV files. So you might have like drums and bass on one. You might have all of the instruments on one. You might have main vocals on one. Then you might have background vocals uh, on another. And then we might take that. But it's preferred to just kind of do standard um, stereo master and then in terms of getting it ready for distribution we're embedding ISRC codes we're dealing with things like metadata um, we're dealing with things like DDP images which stands for disk detection protocol image which is basically like a red book disk or a master disk in a digital form and and labels and artists can send those over to CD manufacturers and those can get burned from there. When it comes to vinyl, 
you got to do a whole separate process for vinyl uh, mastering and vinyl manufacturing. So mastering is dealing with all of these things. So um, it's not just making a song loud real quick and getting it out to the world. It's, it's actually more things than that. So that's the first thing to go over. What is audio mastering? Um, second, why is audio mastering important? Audio mastering is, is very important because, once again, like I kind of just stated before, you want you want a different set of ears to come in and bring some unbiasedness and bring some objectivity um, to the team and to the process. Um, and when you've heard a song a million times, your ears get worn out. If I've never heard a record, then I get to bring some objectivity to it. I have an unbiasedness um, in the process because I've never heard it before. Uh, and I'm uninvolved and I, I have less of an emotional attachment to the record where I can be honest. Um, also, it's a totally different skill set uh, than mention. It's a, it's totally different techniques. It's totally different things that are proven over time. Um, and if I have put a lot of time to specialize in the mastering, I guarantee you there's some tricks up my sleeve and there's some, some knowledge that I have because I've really dedicated a lot of hours of work to this specific area. Um, and you want to make sure that you're bringing the best presentation to the world um and and it's very important that these records sound as great as they can and they feel as great as they can and a big part of that is going to be having somebody that specializes um in audio mastering and so i, I would say that audio mastering is important because you want to have that polished complete sound and you want to have somebody um who specializes in that. And most of the time, too, a lot of times, master engineers and master houses and master studios, whatever you want to say, um, have equipment that's typically going to be better than yours. Uh, the acoustics that of the room, like the room treatment is going to be better. Uh, they probably, uh, we're going to have probably software that is better for mastering than you have. Um, the, the plugins and the digital software that it takes for mastering that that you probably wouldn't spend money on. We're going to do that because we specialize in that. Um, and, and and don't get it don't get it twisted. There's a lot of mixing engineers who have really great gear as well, and artists are buying you know home studios and things like that with great gear and that's treated. So the mastering environment is not the only professional environment in the process, but historically, it's typically better. Um, than the stages in the production process prior to it. Uh, and so, yeah, that's important that you want to have somebody that knows what they're doing in an environment that is specified and spec for mastering to be done. It's very important that what's done in the studio translates into the real world on as many playback systems as possible. That's a part of mastering, all right? Number three, what qualifications should a professional audio engineer have? Uh, a professional audio master engineer have man um this is actually something that people ask and it's kind of hard to answer this question um because everybody has their own opinion first off um i think the fundamentals of audio engineering is a must um all the master engineers are some of the smartest guys in the process. They, they, most of the time they've spent time learning the, the full process of record production um, so that they can be well informed on working with everybody else. Uh, Cause typically as master engineers, a lot of times we're asked to do um sometimes unrealistic things and we're asked a lot of questions. And so you have to be very knowledgeable of things. So, so first off, uh, you know, you want to make sure that you know the fundamentals of audio engineering and audio production holistically, um, not just in mastering, but mixing, recording, production. You want to be well-rounded um, because they're going to have questions thrown at you and you need to be able to take those on to answer that. Um, I also would say outside of that, um, you need to be able to have a understanding of creativity just because this is mastering doesn't mean that you can't be creative. Um, so yeah, you need to, you need to know all of the fundamentals and then take that and learn how to 
be creative with that and bring your own philosophy to the table, bring your own sound to the table while serving a vision of what the client is wanting you uh, to do. I think another qualification is no music as much as possible. Don't just uh, pigeonhole uh, yourself or limit yourself to a specific genre. Learn music. Me, I come from the hip hop genre, but hip hop is not hip hop and rap is not the only thing that I can do. I can handle anything from jazz records to rock and roll to country to pop to gospel. Uh, pretty much anything that you're going that you can hear on radio, I'm going to be able to handle. And other things because I I understand the fundamentals of audio engineering. I'm creative, but I understand music. I'm also a real musician, and that's very important if you want to be able to have different things also uh be ready to invest whether it's uh analog equipment hardware equipment or digital equipment you need to learn the tools that you're using so not just the fundamentals of audio engineering but you need to know your tools um like the back of your hand and spend a lot of time on making sure that you know what you're doing um and and if you can find somebody like myself who can take you under the wing and teach you. If you need to go to school, go to school. But the education is important. So if you're going to call yourself a professional master engineer, you need to make sure that 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 you know what you're talking about. Um, so those are some qualifications. Uh, I can say a lot more, but I would say that those are some basic qualifications. Um, and professionalism. Also, being learning how to be professional and learning how to run a business. Very important. This is a business. Yeah, it's art. It's fun. But it's a it's a business at the end of the day. You are running a a, a business and and building a company up. So you need to learn business. That's very important. That is so overlooked. Everybody talks about just learning stuff in the studio and all learning how to ne- no. You need to learn how to run a, a a business holistically. Very important. Question number four: When is a mitz ready to be mastered? I think a mitz is first off. I think be even before mitzing. You need to have a great record. If you don't have a great record, what's the point of even getting it mixed? First off, so I think it's ready to. Uh, I think it starts with a great song, great songwriting, great arrangement, great production, a great performance by the artist, and then that gets recorded in a great mix. A great mix needs to embody all of that. Plus, a mix needs to, you know, the mix engineer needs to accomplish what the client is wanting them. Um, to do and that mix need it needs to have dynamics it needs to have movement it needs to sound great it needs to feel great and when everybody in the process can agree that it's a great record that it's a great sound of record that it's a great feeling record and it's been taken as far as it can be taken then it's ready to get mastered um but until those things are accomplished songs aren't ready to be mastered and be delivered and distributed to the world because you haven't done all you can do to make it a timeless record. It needs to be a timeless record. It needs to be able to be around. Question number five. Where is the future of audio mastering going with the rise of artificial intelligence? Um, so AI is here. AI, a.k.a. artificial intelligence. AI is here. Um, and where I think that is going, I, I, I think that audio, I think that audio mastering and artificial intelligence, first off, is here. There's been things like Lander, Lander has been around for years now, um, and that and it's transformed into things besides master AI master and smart master whatever you want to call. Um, but it's been around. What Isotope? Isotope is a plug-in company. They they make something called Ozone, which is kind of a standard master software that that you know is internationally used. So what Isotope has done with things like Ozone, um, it's it's going to in in it enable a lot of producers and mix engineers and artists to try to attempt mastering. Um, and so, you know, it's like the old saying, adapt or die. And so for guys like myself who are, who specialize in mastering, I think there's always going to be a place in jobs for us because I just don't think a computer algorithm is ever going to be able to beat somebody like me. I don't say that arrogantly, but is a computer can't, can't do what a human do can do. It's too many variables, uh, too many things to factor in where I'm going to always be able to beat uh, AI mastering. But 
I do think that for people who can't afford somebody like myself, who can't afford somebody like a Roger Willis of New Beginner Master, Dan Shike of Tone and Volume Mastering, a Colin Leonard of um, Sing Mastering, Dave Kutch at the Mastering Palace. You know, all of these wonderful master engineers that's out here. I, I'm just saying a, a few of, of a whole bunch of options. Um, oh, yeah, Kyber Montero of Frequency Canvas, by the way. That's, that's, the, that's the company uh, that I own and work for. Anyways, um... I think that for people who can't afford, you know, to pay 150 uh per master, 250, 350 per master, whatever the, the rate may be, the AI options are good. Um but you need to make sure that you really have a good mix um that you're delivering to those. And I think that you can get away with some stuff on a smaller scale. Um there is a difference definitely when you compare industry stuff to things like that. Um but all of this stuff has a place. It's, it's just like in the restaurant market, you know, McDonald's has a place. Cheesecake Factory has a place. Applebee's has a place. Ruth Chris has a place. Longhorn Steakhouse, Texas Row House, Outback Steakhouse, they all have a place. Um, your mom and pop's restaurants in your city have a place. All of these, There's a market for all of this stuff. So I think just like any other industry, there's a market, um, there's a market share and a marketplace for um, for every level of business and different kind of scenarios, I think it just depends on what the client needs, what the client can afford. Rather, that's an independent artist, independent record label, major label, whatever it may be. I just think it depends on budget, and I think it depends on what is needed um, for the client and needed for the job. All right? So I know that's a lot of geeky talk. Round of applause, man, for hanging out with me. Once again, make sure that you check the podcast out. On places like Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, YouTube, which is now turning in, uh, uh, Google Podcasts, which is now uh, the podcast on YouTube, YouTube for podcasts, whatever it's called. Uh, but it is on the YouTube pi- uh, platform. Be sure to share us on social media. If you need your podcast, if you want to do a podcast and you need to produce, visit us at FrequencyCanvas.com. Reach out. If you are an independent record label uh, or major record label, or independent artist, a major recording artist that needs uh, audio mixing and mastering services, make sure that you reach out. If you need music production services, reach out. We do have a team of and network of music producers who are great. So make sure that you reach out to us, man. I want to say once again, thank you to the Avidity Awards uh, for presenting me as the Master Engineer of the Year Award. <laughs> Thank you to everybody that voted. I want to take this time because I probably won't talk about it much uh, more uh, on this podcast. Maybe I can get Derek Huggins, the CEO of the Avidity Awards, on here uh, one episode. Maybe I should reach out to him. Definitely going to tell him about this episode. But today is February 1st. Happy Black History Month. Happy New Year because this is the first episode of the year on the Board Talk Podcast. Remember, the, this is the audio, uh, the art and necessity of audio mastering part two, the Board Talk Podcast season number two, episode number six. We're going to end out with my new single, Shut It Down, which is available on, from Engage Records on all platforms right now. Yeah, schools, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 I shut it down, I shut it down. I'm levitating, so that means I'm off the ground. I'm off the ground. I'm here, so that means I'm about to clown. Yes, sir. Please excuse the drip, cause somebody might drown. Tell them boys I shut it down. Hey, shut it down. Yeah. I'm levitating, so that means I'm off the ground. I'm feeling it. So that means I'm about to clown. Please excuse the drip, cause somebody might drown. Yes. Yeah. Boy, so for the broken back at it again. Yeah. Kobe with the broken finger, we about to win. And the devil throw him low. Hey, but, but the spirit drilling in me, I look at him and grin. Be blessed, y'all, man. Go be productive, sound great. Frequency Canvas is the sound. Thank y'all.